Hello and welcome to the All Flyers. Lockheed Martin had a problem. In 1957, the CIA had approached them to build an undetectable spy plane, one that would fly at Mark 3.2. The problem, at this speed, air friction heated surfaces to hellish temperatures. How hot? Well, nose and forward fuselage, 427 degrees centigrade to 649 degrees centigrade. Average fuselage, 318 degrees centigrade. Upon landing, pilots checked the canopy with hands in gloves to see if it was cool enough to open. Lockheed's A-12 precursor showed promise as well as Convair's Kingfish design with its pyro ceramic heat resistant material. The engineering consequences of these temperatures dictated every aspect of the SR-71 design and operation. This is why 93% of the aircraft was made of titanium alloy. Titanium is a tough metal. Shaping and milling titanium for the Blackbird was one of the most significant engineering challenges Lockheed had to overcome. The short answer is, with extreme difficulty, immense innovation and completely new manufacturing processes. Here is a breakdown of how they did it, separating the challenges from the solutions. The core challenge, titanium's tough properties that made it perfect for the SR-71 also made it a nightmare to machine. It retains its strength at high temperatures. It hardens quickly when you bend, cut or pound on it. A tool that starts cutting can quickly find itself trying to cut a spot that has become much harder, leading to tool breakage. At high temperatures, generated by friction during machining, titanium reacts with and welds itself to the tool material. Imagine that. This destroys the cutting tool and ruins the part. It has a low thermal conductivity. Heat doesn't dissipate away from the cutting edge into the chips or the workpiece. Instead, the heat concentrates on the tool tip, accelerating wear and failure. The Skunk Works team, led by Kelly Johnson, had to invent new techniques from the ground up. One, tooling, the right cutters, slow speeds and high feed rates. They learned to run machining tools at slower speeds than for aluminium or steel, but with a faster feed rate. This prevented the tool from dwelling in one spot and generating excessive heat that would work harden the titanium. Two, flood cooling with special coolants. Machining was done under a constant massive flood of special coolant. This wasn't just for lubrication. Its primary job was to keep the workpiece and tool cooler to prevent reactivity and work hardening. Standard chlorine-based cutting fluids reacted with titanium, so new non-reactive coolants had to be developed. Three carbide tooling. High-speed steel tools wore out almost instantly. They switched to extremely hard tungsten carbide tools, which had much higher heat resistance and wear characteristics. Even these tools had a very short lifespan compared to machining other metals. Four, handling the material from sheets to parts. Cleanliness is everything. Titanium, especially at high temperatures, is highly susceptible to contamination. Cadmium plated tools were forbidden. Why? Cadmium is a low melting point metal. If a cadmium based wrench was used on a hot titanium bolt, the cadmium would embrittle the titanium and cause it to crack under stress. They used special clean tools marked with a red ribbon. Five, forming and annealing to shape titanium sheets into the complex curves of the blackbird's body, they had to create massive new forming dies. The titanium would often be annealed or heat treated to soften it before forming and then heat treated again after forming to restore its full strength. Six, drilling and fastening. Drilling holes for rivets was a major hurdle. They developed a specific pecking technique. 
drill a hole little by little, pull out to clear chips and apply coolant, then drill a little more. They also invented new types of titanium rivets. Seven, the biggest secret, the barium crown. This is one of the most famous stories in aerospace manufacturing. The raw titanium, alloy B120, came from, would you believe it, the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Purchased through dummy corporations worldwide, Lockheed discovered that the Russian titanium was forged and formed differently due to their processes. The problem, when they tried to form large complex shapes, the US made titanium would often crack and split. A Lockheed metallurgist discovered that the Russian titanium had a different crystalline structure due to the presence of trace amounts of certain elements and their specific forging process. The Russian's titanium structure was likened to a barium crown glass, which is very strong and malleable. To replicate this, Lockheed had to build massive forging presses that could shape the titanium while it was red hot, essentially mimicking the Russian process. They couldn't just cut the titanium, they had to forge it into shape to get the same properties. This was a monumental undertaking that required building entirely new industrial infrastructure. The airframe itself was a masterpiece of design for manufacturability. The titanium skin was corrugated like cardboard. This allowed it to expand and contract lengthwise with the intense heat. The plane could grow several inches in flight without buckling or stressing the structure. The plane was built in huge sections, nose, cockpit, fuselage sections, chines, wings, engine nacelles. These sub-assemblies were machined and built on massive jigs. Giant milling machines using the techniques described above would slowly carve complex frames, ribs and spars from solid blocks of titanium. Much of the structure was built like a stressed skin monocoque where the outer skin carries the major structural load. Every machine part had to be perfect. Everything was designed to fit together perfectly in the air at 260 degrees C. On the ground, fuel dripped from the tanks because the seals were only designed to expand and seal at operational temperatures. This is why the SR-71 always left a puddle of fuel on the ramp before takeoff. In conclusion, constructing the SR-71 wasn't just about designing a fast plane, it was about pioneering an entirely new branch of metallurgy and manufacturing. They didn't just mill titanium, they learned to tame it through brute force, incredible ingenuity and a willingness to solve problems that had never been encountered before. Thank you for watching. Comment if you can think of other instances where titanium solved a problem, aeronautical or not. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and donations showing support are appreciated.